Welcome students. So I am going to give you a little introduction on wave variables and how to solve these types of problems. It is helpful if you struggled on that wave intro lab um, to view this video and it'll walk you through not just solving problems in general, such as the ones on your PHW, but um, how to complete the lab as well. Um, I had a lot of questions on how to do the solving and find the values. So I'm going to go over that with you um, at the end of these slides. So your wave variables, you've got your equation. This is one of the equations you need to know for this lab. F represents frequency, T, capital T, represents period, and the period, of course, is the time required for one complete wave to pass a given point, and it is measured in seconds. You use that to find your frequency. It is a cursive F, that's the variable we use for frequency, and it is the number of wavelengths that pass a given point per second. This is measured in one over seconds, um, but the general measurement we use for this is hertz. So this is an important equation for you to know and also for your uh, wave intro lab. So the other equations you use in that lab is velocity is equal to wavelength times frequency. The one that you have learned from the kin kinematics unit is distance over time, which you also used when you did your slinky lab. And then um, some other equations just by manipulating some of these variables are wavelength over period equals velocity. And of course, in order to find the frequency given a period or the period given a frequency, this is going to be your equation. All right, here are a few practice problems which should help you with your PHW questions. Um, a fisherman measures an ocean wave. It travels at 1.5 meters per second with a wavelength of 3 meters, and you need to calculate the frequency. So we've got the velocity. We've got the wavelength, and we're solving for frequency. The equation that involves all of those variables is this one. So you plug in your values, divide the 3 to the other side, and you get 0.5 hertz. Here's another equation. We've got a hiker. He shouts towards a vertical cliff. The cliff is a distance of 685 meters and the echo is heard four seconds later. Now, what I want you to think about is that the echo starts at the hiker, goes toward the cliff, and then bounces back. So you could do this two ways. You could double the distance and use four seconds as your time, or you could use the distance to the hiker and um, take half of your time, and that's what I did in this example. So we're solving for the speed. We know the equation, given our variables of distance and time, our velocity equals distance divided by time. So again, I'm not using four seconds because four seconds is the time it takes for the sound to go to the cliff and then back to the hiker. So we need to cut that in half, and the equation is going to be Eight, 685 meters divided by two seconds, which gives me 342.5 meters per second. This is about the speed of time, or sorry, this is about the speed of sound, and the speed of sound in air is always the same. It will change slightly if the air is more dense um, or more thin, but this is the basic value that you're going to use for speed of sound. The next equation is to use those values to find the frequency of sound, and they're giving you the wavelength. So we have the velocity, we have the wavelength, and we need to find the frequency. Again, this is going to be our equation, and we plug in the velocity, take the wavelength, divide the wavelength, to the other side and we get a frequency of 456.67 hertz. From the frequency, you can find your period. 
Now we've taken the period and found the frequency. It's the same process. They are reciprocals of each other. So you take your frequency. The equation is period equals one over frequency or the reciprocal of your frequency value, which is 0 0.002 seconds. All right. This is all to help you with your PHW questions, but a lot of you guys, especially when we had our tutorial talks, had trouble with your Waves Intro Lab. Now, in the second page, you had to find velocity two ways. The easiest way is to find distance over time. So you have to do this with a high pitch and a low pitch. I'm gonna do this for a medium pitch. The best way to do this is to use your tape measure as well as your timer and to set this to one pulse rather than multiple pulses. So I need the distance that this wave is gonna travel and um, I'm gonna use the distance of this screen here as my D value. So it's gonna be about 496.3 centimeters, which of course we have to convert to meters. So let me take my sketch pad and I'm gonna write these values. So I have velocity is equal to distance divided by time. And my distance is equal to, now centimeters needs to be converted so I have to move it over two decimal places and I get 4.963. Now I need to time how long it takes for this wave to pass. So the best way to do this is to start your timer first um, because it'll be too hard to click the pulse and the timer at the same time. I'm going to play this and then count it. 7, 8, 9, 10. And then I'm going to stop it. The beginning of the wave is where I started my timer. So the end of the, the beginning of the wave is where I'm going to stop my timer. I get 24.99 milliseconds. If I subtract 10 from that, because I started my wave at 10 seconds, it's going to be 14.99 milliseconds. And then again, you have to convert that. It'll be three decimal places to the left. So 0 0.02499. And then you're simply going to do the division. So in the end, I get a velocity of 4.96. I'm just going to round it. And 0 0.025. And I get velocity of 198.4 meters per second. Okay, now I'm going to do it with our other equation. V is equal to wavelength times frequency. Okay, so first we want to find the wavelength. So I'm going to start a pulse. And then as the pulse travels through, I'm just going to pause it. And I want the distance from beginning to end. And this is your best estimate. I get 95.5 centimeters, so 0.955 meters. And 
and I'm going to round it to 9 6. My frequency is going to be difficult to solve for, so I'm going to use period. Period is the amount of time it takes for a wave to pass. Now, I'm going to have it pass through a certain point. So when it crosses the end of my screen, I'm going to start my timer. And then when the end of it crosses the end of my screen, I'm going to stop it. And that shows me how long it takes for one wave to pass a certain point. So start my timer. I'm going to start and then stop as soon as it crosses, completely crosses. And then I'm going to convert this to seconds, three decimal places to the left. So I get point zero zero two nine. And then I'm going to find my frequency from that using this equation or just taking the reciprocal. So then I'm going to take 1 divided by 0 0.0029 and I end up with a frequency of 344.8 hertz. And then I'm going to multiply the frequency and the wavelength together. So 0 0.96 times the 344.8. And I get a velocity of 331. meters per second. Now I think I did some conversion wrong here because what you're looking for is for the velocities to match. And what I did, I believe, is I, I know what I did. This is supposed to be 14. Remember we had to subtract the 10 from that value because I started the wavelength at 10. So it should be Four point nine six divided by point zero one five, and then I get more appropriate answer three hundred and thirty point six seven. So again, this is your check. You want to make sure that the velocity you get using d over t is almost the same value as the velocity you get using wavelength times frequency. And if they don't turn out right, go back to your work just as I did and see where you made your mistake. If you still have questions on this, don't hesitate to attend a tutorial and I can walk you through um, any questions you have.